Okay, I think we're live. All right. <laughs> we'll wait a minute while people are coming on. Uh, so welcome everyone to Weekend Wind Down with business coach Nancy. Cheers to my guest, Heather McManus of Collaborate to Win. See, we go up to the camera. Cheers. Cheers. It's fabulous. I'm back to my number one mom. Linky. <laughs> <laughs> So we hope everyone's doing well today. Kids are back to school, mm -hmm. so that's exciting. Everyone's starting to have more time, and I can tell because my calendar's starting to fill up with consults because everyone is finally ready to take their business seriously, make money as an interior designer or an industry partner, and they have time in their lives now that the kids are going back to school. So welcome, everyone. As you come on, make sure you say hi to us. I know Heather's here. Hi, Heather. Hi. <laughs> Heather, we knew you were going to be here. I like <laughs> so appreciate the dedication to Weekend Wind Down. I really do. Um, and I'm excited to talk about this topic today, which is how to make the proper margin on the furnishings that you sell as an interior designer to your clients. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw my little rant in my group, the Interior Design Business Forum. Yesterday, I think it was, about three people reached out to me this week um, outside the group through private messenger saying that their clients are asking for copies of their invoices. And I'm going to do my little rant here again that mm. the fact that we have taught the world who hires interior designers that it's okay to get our full discount or ask for a discount or share the discount is absurd. I mean, we don't ask, I don't think there's any other industry that we say, well, how much did you pay for it? I want to split the discount with you and pay less. You basically just pay what they tell you it costs. So, Heather, your your take on all of this because you're an interior designer as well and you have an interior design firm. So yes. how do you handle this? Okay. This is this is a huge thing. Um and I think the industry, once upon a time, like back in the 1980s, before the internet ever existed, a client could never see what you what things purchased for or anything like that. The trades were way more protective. The internet did not exist. People didn't know as much, so the questioning never happened. And so I think at that time, it was like in everyone's contract, I mark up X. And that was just kind of the way everyone did things. And that's when I started out in my business, which is now eight years into my own business, Artistry Interiors, um, that is how I started. I, I did use that language and I quickly changed it because it sets up this dynamic where they need to know what you pay for that. And it brings up all these questions that they don't need to know about. You don't need to know all that stuff. When I walk into Target or any other store, doesn't matter what store it is, I have no idea what that blouse costs them to buy. I know. I look at the tag and I say, that's a reasonable price for this top, I will buy that. I don't go to the cash register and demand to know that they only you know, spent $5 to purchase that, so therefore I don't wanna spend the 30, I want it for let's say 10. You know, you can make some money, I'll let you make money, how nice of you, right? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, oh, hi, Stephanie. Um, so, you know, I, I think that we have to change as an industry because it used to be a standard that we would tell them, I mark up from what my cost is. And but, you bring up a really good point just to start, like when you said yeah. that, I'm thinking, oh, that was my heyday. But <laughs> that's still a lot of what the courses for interior designers are saying, books that were written back then, coaching programs are still teaching the share your discount method yeah. or tell them what your margin is or your mock-up is, transparency, they call it. And I, I don't call it transparency. To me, transparency is when I sell you something, I will let you know what the price is and you get to choose whether you buy it or not. Yeah. Transparency is not opening up the back office and saying, well, by the way, this is the way I run my business. Like, do you approve? It, you know, like you, you're giving the clients way too much power in auditing your business. I think you're also confusing them. 
you're giving them so much information and they're really confused and they get stressed out because now they're like, well, oh my God, am I really paying the right price for this? So I encourage people, because I really think the markup is an old model. It is out of date and no one should be preaching that anymore. But that's, you know, that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. I, I am not queen of everything. <laughs> you I get to make the rule. <laughs> I'm queen of my own universe. That's right. Now, in, in my business, um, I did away with that pretty quickly because it just created this weird icky dynamic and I wanted to have transparency. I wanted to be honest and I wanted all of that, but all I got was pushback or confusion or just yucky, muddy stuff. Yes. So instead, retail minus a discount. This is something every person who's ever bought anything in their life understands. I get that's a sale rack. I'm getting a good price over there. I'm getting the sale price. I like that. Everyone's happy. So in your business, when you sell the product, you tell them what the retail price is. You tell them this is your discount that I give all of my clients for this company. They're super thrilled. You're making a lot more money on it. And you don't have to be showing them invoices or or your bookkeeping or, or justifying your pricing to them because they well, understand. I do agree that clients understand discount off of retail, but to me, it still puts in their mind that they could go check if they if it's listing anywhere else for cheaper as, than what you're claiming the retail is. Right. So I, I totally get that model and I do kind of like it, but at the same time, I just want my clients, my interior design clients, just to say, this is the price, right? Mm -hmm. This is the price. And I do my best to keep yeah. it under retail price for you whenever I can. And that's it, right? Because if you just say that and you're not getting that much of a discount because we know as much as people should be buying through interior design resources only, and we're going to talk about Collaborate to Win because if you are not signed up with companies that you can get a maximum discount, your company can help them do that. But mm -hmm. if they're doing finishing touches and they're sitting there going to home goods or local places to shop and they're getting a little bit of a discount, in that case, just say, I, you know, I'm giving it to your retail. But in other cases, if you just say, I do my best to keep it under retail, that's it. I do my best to keep it under retail. You're not making any statements that you're going to do 10% under retail mm -hmm. because yeah. then you start Googling and you said it Friday and by Monday it's on sale somewhere and they're asking if they can buy it straight themselves because it's a better price. Mm -hmm. Like right. I, to me, less information is, is better. And, mm -hmm. I, and I've given this example before, like if you hire your landscaper to come and put in bushes and trees and mow your lawn and all that stuff. They just charge you for topsoil. They charge you for the bushes. They charge you for the trees. You could have gone to Home Depot and bought them yourself for probably cheaper and just paid them for the labor, but they just, you wanted them to just do it. People who hire interior designers are hiring you to do the work for them, not just be personal shoppers. Yeah. And I, I do know one designer that says, just plain, this is your price. Yes, that's the way I teach it. This is your price. And done. Right. And, and no that. conversation. No conversation. No mm -hmm. conversation. You know, one of my best friends here on Long Island is one of the top designers. She doesn't sit there and go, this is the price and this is what I gave you and this is what I got it for and 10% off of retail. Mm -hmm. She just says, this is the price. Right. And yes. Is there work in the background for you guys? Unfortunately, because of the internet, there is, and I've talked to people about this before, like, do I really have to Google every single item that I'm selling <laughs> like, to try to find it? And sometimes you do have to Google quite a bit. And yeah. that's why there's always some glory in doing custom work because then they can't Google it and find the exact thing so that mm -hmm. you can do much more, you know, leeway to charge what you need to charge to make a living. And right. this is, I just want to make this clear that we are not talking about screwing your client at all we're talking about making a living. <laughs> what of course not no it's not about we wouldn't be in clients. business if we if we screwed over a client the that gets around 10 times faster than a good review it takes 
you know, a good review is like pulling teeth out of somebody and they'll, they'll give you a good review and maybe they tell one friend. If they have a bad experience, you're going to tell 10 people, anyone that's going to listen, you will be out of business in no time. No yeah. one's looking to do that. No one's looking to do that. So again, it's not like, and, and then I get this, but I feel like I'm being greedy. Like if I'm, yeah, if I'm getting such a big discount, I feel <sighs> like I'm being greedy. You're not being greedy for, for being a good business person. Right. When I was an art consultant, which I was for 17 years, art framing and accessories, if someone said to me, if I sold a piece of art, this is the price. And if I had the time, I'd call the supplier and say, hey, could you do any better for me? Right. And if I made an additional 10 percent of what I was paying, did I go back to the client and go, oh, my God, you're so lucky today. I called the supplier and I got an additional 10 percent off. And I'm going to pass that to you. I'm like, no, I was like, okay, great. I've increased my margin on this one job, on this one piece of furniture or one piece of art. And I was like proud of myself for being a good businesswoman in the background and increasing my margin. So does it make sense what I'm saying? Like we don't have to, when we get a better price, that doesn't mean we have to give it automatically to the client. Yeah. I think that that's some mindset stuff that you as a coach, could ninja in and get down to, okay, why do you think you're not deserving of money? <laughs> why do you think you don't really deserve to make a profit? And I've sat down and told my clients um, upfront, like well, as we're signing a contract, as I'm going through each bit so that they understand it, I've said to them, you know, I want to be honest and upfront with you. And this is how I'm building trust is by telling you, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, it it's tough to get that initial trust with a client, but once you have it, the next time you go to sell them something, there's that understanding that they can trust you and it's just done for them. And I think, you know, there are, there's, um, I definitely do consultations and it's a different animal. I even have a package that's in between full design and a consultation. So that package, I tell them, you know, I'm just going to give you the plan. It's going to be floor plans. It's going to be like what you should buy and who, you know, where to find that stuff. But you're going to go and do that themselves. And that's, you know, different from the model where you're purchasing and it's understood that you're doing that. And that's that's the more complicated stuff. But it's the bigger job, the meatier job, the one where you're going to make a lot more money and you need less of those over the course of a year. It's true. And here's I mean. I, I teach and I finally named what I teach, right? I'm calling it the KISS interior design business model. Mm -hmm. It's super simple. I didn't call it keep it simple, stupid, mm -hmm. right? But it's super simple. And the designer for a day is kind of like, if you choose to use that model, which I teach and I have a contract for on my website, that's when you're going in and you're just basically helping them make decisions for a day. It's somebody who's stuck, but they still want to do it themselves. They don't want the full service. Mm -hmm. And then we have designer on call, which you can change the names of any of these things, guys. This is just what I call it. Um, designer on call is when they're purchasing hours. And mm -hmm. sometimes you are purchasing on their behalf and sometimes you're not. And in that contract that we sell, we basically say the same thing I said before. You're purchasing at our retail price, our retail price. And again, be smart and don't try to screw anybody and keep it as best you can under retail so they feel like they're getting a little something, but you don't have to attest to any of that. And then there's the full service design, which is kind of where you charge a design fee. After the design fee, you presented your boards and they sign off on the final furnishings, how they want their home to look, then you go into the procurement stage. And in that procurement stage, you can make money, you should make money on both the hourly when you're replacing the client. Money. <laughs> right, when you're replacing the client's hands and feet and mouth and everything, you're ordering everything, they don't have to do it, you deserve your hourly fee for that. And your margin on your furnishings is for Yes. The years of relationships you've built, the studying you've done about furniture, the quality of it, keeping up on the latest and greatest in all these different companies, uh, talking to the reps, keeping your library organized. Like you deserve to get paid for that. And you're right. The money mindset is really what locks up a lot of people. And I do a ton of coaching on this because they feel like, 
and this is funny because I did this when I was an art consultant. Here I was an art consulting sell, selling high-end artwork, uh, she plays in originals and custom pieces, yet I was shopping at home goods for my art. I would have never hired me. Mm -hmm. But that's because that was a stage of my life that I didn't need somebody like me. But when you're at the level where you could you appreciate the service because you're too busy and you can't select and you're all locked up and you can't get it done, that's when you hire an interior designer. And you guys deserve to make a living. So that's that's my re-rant. And I just want to also announce there are people in my group because let me see, did I share this? Yeah, some people are watching from inside my group, the Interior Design Business Forum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you comment, it doesn't come up on the feed here. If you want to watch kind of really live, go over to my business page, Nancy Gansko for Business Coach, because that's where we're broadcasting from. Okay. And if you make a comment there, we'll actually see it and be able to answer your questions and all that stuff. So just wanted to announce that because I see some people are watching inside the group because I had shared it there. Um, so weigh in on this, everybody, who tells the client the percent of mock-up they do on furnishings or a percent off of retail? Who does that as opposed to, I just tell them the price. So if you say, I just tell them the price, um, let me hear it because it'll probably be all my clients. <laughs> um, and bravo. bravo. <laughs> well, you know what? I, last week's weekend wind down, was it last week's? Was with Nicole Cole. She was one of my clients. And it, it was so sweet because at the end she said, you know what, Nancy's well worth every penny. I've made 10 times what I've paid her by using her business models and getting past where, where she was stuck. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, I'm really on a mission to change the way residential homeowners look at interior designers and understand they deserve to make a living because they are business owners. They're not just housewives trying to have a hobby on the side. And if you are, that's fine with me. When I had young kids, I kind of did the art consulting as a hobby, it really didn't make a lot of money. But if you're serious about making money, it's absolutely possible and you need to to start changing your mindset, changing your contracts and learn the words and the confidence around delivering that message. So, all right, that's my, that's my rant for today. <laughs> so Heather, tell everyone about how you started Collaborate to Win mm -hmm. and then we'll go into how it can help them make a living. Gotcha, okay. So um, it all kicked off, um, so I've been in business for eight years now. I've been in the industry for almost 20. Um, and so when I started my own business, um, I had my first ideal client, so happy to have her. And we were doing the whole house. And at the end of the project, um, I had originally gone to a furniture store where I only made 10%. And um, it, it was I was happy to have that money. It wasn't... Um, I didn't feel like mm, I'm not making enough. Now I know I was definitely not making enough and I could have been in such a better position financially to like, you know, invest better and, and make better choices had I had the knowledge that I have now. Yes. So when I got to the point in the project where I said, maybe there's another way for me to source, I went to, um, we, we needed a, uh, I'll try to avoid specifics so we i need this particular light we picked out everything about it the size the color the finish yada yada and i asked the the new york showroom which is the showroom that i'm supposed to call and ask for these things right because that's my to the trade source right. they gave me a price i told her uh, I, I clarified with them. I said, this is my price so I can mark it up. What do people mark it up usually? Um, and he said, you know, you can do safely 20%. So I said, okay, you know what? I was, I didn't know anything. No, I <laughs> so know, I know. Cool. This is why I like even when baby designers come into my calendar because I'm like, don't start out like this. So this is a great lesson. Well, it's almost like you're always a baby designer because there's always something new to learn. That's true. So That's this was like my new, how do I get stuff for my clients learning? So um, so in my ignorance, I mark it up 20% and I tell her the price. At that weekend, and this is someone who has just blindly purchased from me. She's not a shopper. She's not like the problem child 
client. She went to a lighting showroom and found the same exact light from the same company for a lot less than I was getting it for. So suddenly every single piece of furniture in her whole home was in question. Whoa, wait a minute. So I, I had to explain to her that I didn't know this was the price I got. Maybe I, I am dyslexic. Who knows, maybe I got it wrong. Let me call them, let me see what the problem is because that can't be. Oh, oh, it was. Oh, it was. I'm so sorry for you from back then. That's hard. I mean, the internet was just at the beginning of causing problems for everyone. This was going to another showroom and finding it for cheaper. Um, I was lied to so badly by the New York showroom. Um, so this didn't just lose me the sale of a chandelier. Big whoopity do for losing that one thing. I lost the client. We were talking about doing the basement. She was like, I'm going to, I need to redo all this down here and like actually finish it and make it a game room and have it be all fun. Uh, we needed to finish some of the kids' rooms. We needed to do some other stuff to just really nail it down. I only got a couple of professional photographs from this house. I should have been able to photograph the entire house. I should have gotten many, many referrals. I got zero referrals. She lives in my neighborhood, has a million kids, two businesses. I missed out big time. A million kids. So, well, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, this, that, that hurt. That stung. That, so yeah. at that point, I'm like, okay, so what do other people do? So I started to ask around and I had heard about, you know, High Point. And so that's where I started. I went to High Point and I figured out what are the different price points? What is the best price point? And that's when I discovered the word stocking dealer. And no one's going to tell you this. They are going to tell you, oh, we love designers. Here's your designer discount. Well, your designer discount is the same thing that Wayfair is selling it for with free shipping. So you can't actually sell anything if your client is just going to type it in there and get the same exact price as you and have the same access as you. It just... Oh, this was a big problem. So I opened accounts for myself and it was tough. It's really tough to do as an individual. So um, I started with an upholstery line that I really liked. I liked the fact that, you know, they kind of had modern and they had traditional and it was a good price point. And it just felt like, okay, I can have this one account and maybe this other account and I can get it going. So $10,000 to open an order with this company. Wow. Your first order has to be 10 grand to open an account. I did it. I did it with my first client. We went well over that because she was fantastic. Now the next year. I was gonna say, and that's hard to do because what could happen is you have your first client that doesn't quite make it. And mm -hmm. now your next job, you're trying to retrofit from the company that may not have exactly what you've thought of creatively just to make those minimums. So it's actually gonna change your creative process. If yeah. Right. It will limit you if, yeah, if they didn't have everything you wanted, it would be limiting. Right. Um, just like offer the one, one company. Right. So the next year I had different kinds of jobs. It was a different year. It was a funny year. There was a lot of window treatments and other things. So I didn't need so many sofas and chairs and, and whatnot. And I was, I was trying to pull it together. And my sales rep said, Heather, if you don't do $20,000 this year, oh because your opening order was 10, you have to do 20 every year to keep that account going at a stocking dealer price. So if I don't do $20,000 in that year, he's gonna take away my whole sample of, of um, sam my samples of fabric oh, wow. and remove my account. So I said, well, I've had this idea of banding together with all these designers because I knew this would be difficult. Um, so that's what I did with five different people in my dining room, we started the buying group. So I got um, one order from uh, one of our first founding members and another order from a founding member. And I had another order. And I, so I made that $20,000 for that year. Nice. And yeah, and it, it, it went great. And the first order that one of them placed, she shipped it to California. I'm in New Jersey. So when, we shipped something to California. I'm like, wait a minute, 
So you had a client because she had lived there. So she has clients like all over the place because they, they move around a lot. So she has this base of clients in all these different states. And now with eDesign, your client could be anywhere. Yes. So we solved the problem of how do you ship it? We solved the problem of what happens if it's broken? Because Uttermost Lamp came in and it was busted. So you take a picture and you email it to them and they're like, okay, we'll send you a new one. It took three tries, but she got her new lamp. And it's just a matter of emailing. And anytime you need samples, um, a lot of the little tiny fabric swatches are just big, but it's enough to get the color and the, you know, feel it. Um, and those are usually free. Right. So we're able to do this buying group to keep the minimum orders, those high minimum orders going. And now since we have 150 members and over 200 vendors, you've got, I mean, so, like it's an overwhelming amount of vendors to choose from. It's like, wow, which one to choose from? You know, like I could do this lamp or I could do that company. I could do so many different things. So you're able to be creative and you're gonna make so much more money because we're getting the best price by pooling our resources and all working together. I love this. Let me just catch up on comments for a second. Um, years ago, again, when I was an art consultant, a, a buying group of local ladies, one gentleman, uh, had started a buying group here on Long Island. And it was just mm -hmm. about five or six of them. And I did a presentation on how they should buy artwork through me. And two, of, two or three of them ended up opening up a showroom here on Long Island because mm -hmm. as their buying group grew, they said, well, why not, if we're getting such good prices, set up a brick and mortar for other designers. So it's amazing how when you think you're just doing one thing, like starting a buying group for your own personal business, and now you're serving the whole interior design industry or whoever wants to be served, which you can tell me if you don't, because we're going to tell you why. But let me catch up on comments. So give me one second while I scroll sure. back. I don't remember what I posted yet, but Giselle, yep, she just tells them the price. And on her welcome packet, she claims the value of purchasing from my design studio. Exactly. Nice. You are showing your value, not as a personal shopper that's giving discounts. You're showing your value as an interior designer, which mm -hmm. I love. Um, Paul, I have changed to a fee for service model because the good old days of true trade and wholesale pricing was <laughs> yeah. long gone. It's really, I mean, it really is a very tough business for you guys, which is why I'm always on my high horse. Like there is a way to make really good money doing what you do and you mm -hmm. have to learn how to do it. Um, is it okay for me to profit, make money from my supplier by knowing their price list as an interior designer? Kato, well, I'm not sure I understand. Do you understand that question? Well, she says, it okay, is it okay for me to make profit? Yes. I mean, yes, and anyway, <laughs> always okay for you to make profit. I just think the way it was worded confused me. I mean, yes, if you know they're selling it to you for two thousand and the retail is four thousand, you know, some people tell you just charge four thousand because you deserve to make the retail. Some people, like Heather, say take ten percent off the retail. Your client will be thrilled to have it, and I say put a margin on it that guarantees them you're still going to do your best to keep it under retail and you don't have to tell them what percentage anything is. Um, so yes, you are allowed. I mean, doesn't Nordstrom's make money when we buy a dress or a shirt or a pair of pants? We don't say, well, how much did you pay the labor force and how much are you paying for this building and how much are you paying your staff? We know they're pricing it to make a profit and you guys need to do the same. Here's a Nice long comment from Charles. It's so hard when suppliers make it difficult by giving you a designer discount that is nothing more than a gimmick to turn us. Yes. Okay. So this is why Heather is here because her company collaborate to win solves this problem for you because mm -hmm. as Paul said, collaboration is powerful. So <laughs> why don't we tell everyone a little bit? I mean, I love what you're doing and I think that with the service, model that I teach for interior designers to help them make a 40 to 60% profit margin. The 60% is where they're really in their sweet spot, less clients, more money, and you actually have a life and then can enjoy what you do rather than that completely stressed out all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like collaborate to win helps you get there, which is why I'm one of their biggest fans, I think. So, all right. So Heather, tell people when they join your buying group, Mm -hmm. 
let's put dollar and cents to it, what it means to their business. Ah, thank you so much, Nancy. And thank you for, you know, all your support. So uh, to me, it's a no brainer. As soon as somebody finds out what price they've been told from some other source, you know, their trade discount, whatever it is, and they find out what our price is, they're like, oh, well, of course I'm joining. So it's, it's really powerful. It's really a game changer. So I have some notes because I'm terrible at remembering numbers and, and math and stuff. And I, and I hope it's okay with everyone that I am going to share some like real live numbers. So I hope anyone who is not in the industry, like just close your ears for a minute. No, no, I'm going to tell no? them to open their ears because All right. <laughs> All right, well, I'm okay. going to tell you to open your ears because if you hire anyone to do work on your home, they deserve to make money and they deserve to make a living. And it's not, you know, they're doing a great job for you and you love the outcome. You need to pay for services that you need done for you unless you want to do it yourself and everyone deserves to make money. So let's lay it on them. So basically, all right. You're getting so, stock or dealer prices because stock and dealer price. price, yeah. So okay. as when you go to a furniture store, you're gonna make ten percent. When you go to a trade resource, you might make twenty percent. When you buy direct, you're gonna make fifty to seventy percent. Margin or markup. Yeah. Margin or markup is a difference. Uh I think you're talking markup. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I can explain, explain to me later. I can explain right. a little bit about that if we have time. I can share. A okay, okay, because I may not know. Um, all right, so uh, a sofa from um, you know maybe I won't say, but it's one of the companies that I love. Um, we'll just go with the the retail price is six thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars. That's the retail price. Okay. Now I check the internet. Can I get this on the internet? What did, what are they selling it for? So the internet had it at 20% off. So that's $5,535. So stocking dealer price. Okay. Shh, everyone, right? Don't, don't get upset with me. Um, $2,306 for stocking dealer. Now in collaborate to win, we charge because we're all working for each other. So if you're ordering this sofa from me and I have the account, you're going to pay me 10% to process this order for you. And I'm going to do everything that it takes. If you want samples, I'm going to send you samples. If, you, if there's an issue, there's a scratch on the leg, I'm taking care of that like it's my own. So that's what the 10% covers. So collaborate to win's price on that is just under 3,200, I'm sorry, $2,999. So what is the profit? The profit on that, if you give them 20% off of the retail price, which is what I do because I want my clients to be happy and not and be honest with them and say, look, everyone else is doing this. No one gives you retail. I'm going to do what everyone else does. Oh, so so my profit, you may be unhappy with that, <laughs> but that's what I do. My clients love it. It works for me. Um, so my profit on just the one sofa is two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. And tell me what the re okay. Tell me again because now I'm writing because I didn't have my pen and paper before. <laughs> okay. okay. So the give me the retail price on the sales site. Six nine. Oh, the on the on the internet. Yes, it was five thousand and something. Five five three five. Five five three five. Okay, and through collaborate to win. Collaborate to win's price with the ten percent added in is two nine nine nine. Two nine nine nine. Oh it. no! Wait, is that? No, no, that was the. No, no, that no. That's profit. profit. That's profit. I'm sorry. Collaborate to win's price is I, I. I wrote so tiny, like I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, two five three six is collaborate to win's price. Okay, so that so you're making three thousand dollars in profit. Okay, on, two, five, on one sofa. We've more than paid for your entire year of our membership and everything else. Okay, so 5,535 is what your client can find it on the internet for. You're yes. paying 2,536. The difference is $2,999. Yes. Okay, so 
what I teach my clients is you can go pretty close to retail and still say, I am giving it to you less than retail. I, I go into much more detail than that, but I can't do it here live. Um, these are in my private sessions. I teach you how to calculate confidently to make the maximum. Mm -hmm. What Barbara does in her business is she'll take the 5,535 discounted by 20%, you said? Yeah, it was 20% off. Okay, so 5535 five, times 20%. Oh, no, that is the discounted price. Retail price is $6,919. 6919 but I thought you said they could find it on the internet for 5535 Yes. Okay, so if you're taking, for your business, are you taking 6919 and taking 20% off, or are you taking it off of what they can find it on the internet for? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Because no, that, no. <laughs> I mean, that was why no. I was concerned. I'm like, oh, no, so I'll do what the internet does. I'm not doing better than the internet. Okay. So you would be selling it to them. Mm -hmm. We definitely have a miscommunication here. So you would okay. be selling them. If you took 20% off of 6,919 for the full retail, that brings it to what you said they could find it on the internet for somewhere else for the discounted 5,500. Right, because unfortunately, it's like everyone's trained to go look on the internet. So rather than tell them, here's the retail price and I'm selling it to you for that, I tell them this is, you know, this is the going price. This is what everyone does. Um, it's 20% off your price, $5,535. So that's what I would sell it to a client for. So if they went on the internet and found it on sale somewhere else for $5,535, you're basically matching the lowest retail that's on the internet. Yeah. Okay. And still making $3,000. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess where I got confused is because I thought if you found it on the internet for $5,535, you would be selling it to them for 20% below that. Nah. Okay. Okay, good. Glad. Glad <laughs> All right, well, let's catch up. We're, 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 we're not running a charity. Catch up on, on, on comments here. Let me scroll back. Um, okay, so Stephanie, if you're buying through the Collaborate to Win group for an e design client who lives out of state, are the products being shipped to a warehouse or direct to the client? Almost nowhere ships direct to a client. An accessory like a lamp or some bedding can go directly to a client. But an entire sofa, the UPS man is not delivering an entire sofa himself. It has to go to a warehouse that gets then delivered by your delivery company. And we have videos and helpful information, spreadsheets and all that kind of stuff that help people if you don't already have those things set up. Help people with what? Like, um, so estimated you know, shipping or yes, estimated shipping plus, um, because it depends on how much it weighs and where it's going. So there's a, there's an unknown there, right? But we've, we've got some helpful tools that we give everybody. And also we've kind of asked, who do you use for a local warehouse? So we have a whole list that's grown. Um, as we grow, we, we add to the list all the time. So if you have not done this before, you might not have a local delivery guy that you trust that can get delivered. So, um, so we have a list that you can you can view, and you can always ask our private group and say, "I live in you know in the middle of nowhere. Is there anybody who has some some place that they can deliver to?" And probably someone knows. Right. Okay. And Lindsay's saying also it depends on the. She was answering the other question. Yeah. It depends on the vendor. Those who drop ship will just ship directly to your client. Those who require a receiver, you'll need to ship to the receiver. Um, so that's basically what we just said too. So thank you, Lindsay, for that. And then let's see, Susan, as a member of Collaborate to Win, do you need to have an account with a vendor that other group members may want to buy from, or do you have vendors for commercial projects? Okay, so first, no, you do not have to have accounts. If you just want to come on board and purchase, that's totally fine. If you have accounts and you want to offer them, awesome. We'd love to add it in. Um, and we do have a few commercial. I would love to beef that up more. And I know as we get more members with more accounts, that's how it grows. And we make that happen. So you can join Collaborate to Win just to be a buyer, a yes. designer who's buying at mm -hmm. stock dealer prices from other people's accounts that are already established or you can join Collaborate to Win 
and add your accounts to the spreadsheet that other designers can buy from. And then you'll make that additional 10%, mm -hmm. but you'll have to do the work to mm -hmm. process other people's orders through your vendors, correct? Correct. Okay, so you can do it either way. And then- And you know, the 10%, since I have, I have 20 accounts, but there's only like two or three that people really regularly order from. Um, I probably make, anywhere from 200 to 500 dollars a month in just the 10 percent so right. it's pay it's helping me pay my bills like a lot right. if that pays for one if that pays for one little thing that's that's worth it for you mm -hmm. right it is okay. yeah all right so heather's confused <laughs> we did that to you heather sorry okay we might start from scratch on that example um so I'm confused. If Collaborate to Win takes 10% off the internet price, wouldn't that be? Yeah, no, they don't no. take it off the <laughs> They'll take it off of the uh, stocker. The yeah, and, and, that's, and that's not Collaborate to Win. We're not telling anyone how to price anything. Um, I'm not telling anyone how to run their business. Artistry Interiors gives, I look at what the internet's doing and I pretty much match it and still make money. Correct, so, in okay. I hope that clar clarifies it. No, I think we still confused people. So we're going to do that once again. I'm going to, I'm going to take notes and I'm going to clarify as we okay. go. So okay. give it to me again. It was, go ahead. All right. So retail. 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 Suggested is retail. Like it's, it's retail. Yeah. Well, I, I know. I know all these stupid terms and they're so it confusing. The and then there's MSRP and oh, Lord. Right. Okay. So start again. Retail, right. how much? 6,919, correct? Yes. Okay. And then go to your next. So, note. so the internet had it for 20% off, which is okay. what artistry interiors, Heather McManus, me would sell it to the client for, um, $5,535 because the stocking dealer price is 2306. So you have to add 10% for the account holder to process it for you. So collaborate to wins price, if you wanna call it that, would be 2536. God help us if I transposed anything. Um, okay, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so we're okay. So you're, your profit is two nine nine nine. Okay, so I'm going to put this into my terminology. Okay. To me, the retail price is what someone can find it on the internet for. So to me, that was five thousand five hundred and thirty-five. Oh, okay. That's it's it's on sale somewhere. So that to me becomes the retail that somebody can buy it for. I see. Okay. So that's where the terminology. May I got gotcha. you. Okay. okay. So to me, if a client can find it on the internet for 5,535, that's the retail at that moment in time when you're trying to sell it. And in my world, you're going to add a margin to your price that you're paying, collaborate to win, or you're paying your supplier directly in order to come right under that retail enough where you can look that client in the eye and if they question you, you don't have to tell them if they don't question you that you are still, um, you got it the, for them under retail, a little bit under retail. I was able to get it for you a little under retail and you're making your maximum profit. So your interior design business would charge them the retail, which I'm also all for, by the way. And the fact that you have the confidence to do that, I love that. Um, and you're still making $2,999. Because the that website that I found it on, List retail six nine one nine twenty percent off sale three five three you know so to right. me like I I'm totally comfortable using those those terms and, and numbers yeah. all but I think Christine Conti she said uh it, it's MSRP I mean it's actually could have been the MSRP that yeah yeah, yeah. we're seeing mm -hmm. so right okay. and no one does that no one actually uses that I know it's put out there and no one charges it right right. Um, oh, I love, okay, Christine just posted. I see it up on my other screen, but it didn't come up. Oh, here it is. 
It's a 54% profit margin passes Nancy's test. Thank you. <laughs> passes my test. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you have a calculator, Christine. Um, yeah, because in my course, the interior design profit formula, we all, I also go over all this among tons of other things on how to run your business um, awesome. profitably. And mm -hmm. I think people are missing out. Uh, excuse my dog. She's if I work after a certain time lately, she's been coming up on my lap. Um, so I love this because you need to make a living mm -hmm. by both your design fee, your hourly fee and your margin on your product combined so you can actually run a great business, have a life and have the money to go to high point and do things that you need to do to grow your business. Right. So, um, so, okay. You have another example. Oh, um, <laughs> I do a rug. So um, the okay. So I, I don't know if I should tell everybody what company it is, but it is a real company. It's a real rug. Okay. Um, so retail. We're gonna put that in quotes. Retail. What no one uses. Eight thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars for an eight by ten. Okay. The internet is selling it for thirty percent off. Okay. So that's what Heather Artistry Interiors would do too. So okay. five thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay. Stocking dealer is thirty seven fifteen. So collaborate to wins price once you add the ten percent on is four thousand eighty six dollars. So your profit on that is seventeen thirteen. It's a beautiful thing. So let's say you have a crappy year. Right, not too many clients came through, but you got one client that needed one rug and one sofa. So if you're part of Collaborate to Win, your profit margin that you keep for buy, for sourcing that one sofa that we just went over and one rug combined is $4,712. And how much does it cost to be part of Collaborate to Win? Okay. So we are about to have a price increase. So as long as you are joining before October 1st, oh. it is $297 for the year. That's less than $25 a month. And it's a, it's from the time that you join to that. So September, you join September, you are due up next September. If you join no, November, you're due next November. So we are raising our price October 1st to $370. So it's it's $30 and change a month. Still well worth it. Yeah. Because yeah. well I mean, you buy one sofa, you've made so much money plus your money back. You know, it's right. And to, to clarify that yearly fee is for you and your partner to manage collaborate to win to make mm -hmm. sure the spreadsheets are clean and up to date. If there are any issues between buying group members that they are not getting a response quick enough, you intervene, you have a Facebook group for your members, I think, right? Yes, we do. So, so that's for you guys to run this company. That is ridiculously cheap. And if you ever coach with me, I'd be telling you to raise your prices. <laughs> so everybody get in now because if yes. Heather ever chooses to coach with me, I'm going to explain to her that that's not making her enough money, but that 10% that they're paying when they place an order goes to the collaborate to win member whose account they are purchasing through. Yes. So out of the 150 members, we have less than 50 that are account holders. Interesting. So you have how many people, how many companies? Over 200. And that coming, that's coming from only a certain 20% of your members. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, um, I get it. I get it. Okay. So Christine is asking is freight to receiving warehouse included. Then we paid the delivery fee from mm -hmm. yeah. the receiver. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the part that I just wish like there was a magic wand and it would show up in the house, but no, <laughs> yeah. freight is different. You know, everyone has to pay freight and, and then delivery. And we have spreadsheets and, you know, documents that, that help, you kind of price it out. Okay, so Stephanie's asking, but then you have to pay taxes on the products. Yeah, but your client pays. You know, if you're selling it to a client, the end user is the one who's paying the taxes, right? Am I misunderstanding this question? 
Unfortunately, um, because there's been so much um, with the internet sales these days, the government has decided to make wholesale things in certain states taxable. So um, it, it's a really, com I, I am not an accountant. I am not even good at math. So um, I will just say that um, Florida and a few other states have charged a wholesale me um, to send it to the client. And then it, it's like a client's getting um, double taxed twice. There's something wrong with that. I know. <laughs> tax on the product only has to be paid once. So, okay. So I'll talk to up, an accountant. Talk to I'll, an accountant. I'll, That's I'll, what I'm going to say. I'll go for I'm not an accountant. Peter Lang and get him on the show. Okay. So, because, yeah, something doesn't make sense. And they, I, they, they recently changed it, and certain states um, have, like, implemented it, and some states haven't. So with a wholesale order, sometimes sales tax appears on that wholesale invoice. Like the acknowledgement has sales tax on it and it's. But it's still being passed on to. Yeah, the I mean, I, I, you is. know, if, if it's my client, I'm gonna just pretend that that's part of what the item costs. Right, but then the, the government is getting a double dip on that. So, all right, I have to figure, I, I'm, this is the first time I'm hearing this, so I will have to figure that out. Okay, so let's go back to we finish the question because now I'm really hung up on that. I need to know an answer. I, no, I, yeah. It may, it, something doesn't make sense with this, but okay, but then I, you have I, to yes, I agree. <laughs> and so many designers hide their freight and delivery and the cost of the product to the client too. Doesn't that all come off your product profit? No, it shouldn't come off your product profit because you should be raising the price. If you're burying it, the client has to know it's one price mm -hmm. and it includes the freight that you just didn't want to nickel and dime them and show it separate. Right. Right. If that's what you do. Um, right. I have a couple they, of we have people who do it both ways in our group. We have people who, who bundle it in. So it's one price and it's a convenience thing for, for the client. Uh, and we have other people that say I charge, you know, 20% extra for this and that. And if there's anything, um, that I owe you in the end, I pay you back that. So everybody works it different. Right. And it is, it's all about the psychology of the sale. And if anyone wants to get on my calendar, get a consult with me because it, it does depend on the, the level of your client sometimes. Like mm. to me, own it. Yes. Everyone has to pay shipping and delivery. Everybody has to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to bury it because it's easier for you not to have to explain it to the client, I totally get it. But then you have to be careful of the wording you use when you say to the client, I'm so happy I was able to get this to fit to you under retail. If you're saying those words and then you're putting your freight and delivery in that number, yes, you're working off, you're taking away your profit in order to save that conversation with the client and not have to deal with that interaction. And that's just a mistake every single time. Unless you're just saying this is my price and sometimes it goes over retail because it has the freight and delivery in there. So it, it depends on how you're explaining it. It's all about the words and the language you use when it comes to, to sales and the mm -hmm. delivery of it. So, okay, let me just go back. We're getting a lot of comments here. That's um, good. It is good. Most online sites quote are 30% off MSRP. Okay. I find it varies. You do? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking all around and I'll find, um, you know, it, it can depend on the vendor and it can depend on the site. Right. Okay. And Be Live makes it very hard for me to scroll. If I scroll too fast, it jumps. So if I'm oh, missing anyone's comment, <laughs> forgive me. Let me just go back up. How do you handle finish and fabric samples? Um, well, you order it from the person who has the account. So if there is a charge, I mean, wood samples generally are about five bucks each. Um, a lot of the fabric samples, like I said, that the tiny, tiny little ones, but they're enough to get color and, and feel. Those are usually free. Um, I've had people say, I want to buy the ring of fabrics and I will go through my sales rep and try and source that for them. Sometimes it's available and sometimes it's not. And it just depends on which company. So you order them how, you know, if they don't cost anything, they don't cost anything. And if they do, well, then they do. <laughs> right. Just like if you were setting up an account with them directly. On your own. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Gisela, I am not going to take out my calculator for this one, but I will tell you this. Okay. If you buy it at 4,086, sell it for this, it's only a 29.5, yes. And there are, when I evaluate my clients' businesses, I say overall for that client, you should be between a 40 to 60% profit margin, including mm -hmm. your design fee, your hourly fees, and your margins on your furnishings. Because of exactly this reason, without me taking out my calculator, if these are accurate numbers, which I'm sure they are, because I'm sure you calculated them, that one item may come below mm -hmm. a 40% or 50% profit margin, but the next item, was a custom sofa and you were able to not worry about whether it was searched and actually charge the appropriate amount for your business to stay in business and make a living. So right. it balances out. Yeah, and you're, you're not gonna make as much on a lamp as you would a sofa or a sectional or something. It's, you know, when you make you know, two hundred dollars here and three hundred dollars there and two thousand dollars here, and then that adds up. That's a, those, those are numbers that you can really do something with. Correct. Okay. Lara's saying, would love to know more about how the taxes work on this. Me too, especially in Florida. Now I have to go figure that out. And there's a few more states that have implemented it. That's all okay. I can tell you. I'm not an accountant. I do not want to be responsible for that. Okay. I always recommend Peter Lang. I love him. And I will get on him and see if he will come back. Yeah, see, see if he'll answer that. I will, I will definitely tune in. And you know, it's so hard for accountants because this is so hard. There's and it so changes. Many, it changes constantly, and they have to keep up on all this. Mm -hmm. um, if we pay sales tax on an item, then the tax is paid. The contractor doesn't charge sales tax on what they sell clients directly. They pay sales tax when they purchase it. Correct, because the, ta the sales tax only has to be paid once, but the question, Debbie, is you are passing that on to the client, correct? So maybe right. not in the tax category, because if you put it in the tax category, then your accountant will pay that tax to the state again. And this, this is why I have an accountant, because this makes my brain hurt. This makes my brain hurt, and I'm a business coach. So I <laughs> definitely have to figure this out. Um, right, so Debbie's continuing to say what I'm saying. So then you don't need to charge the client sales tax, just make your mock-up, but you also don't want to have absorbed I think you that still, bill. Yeah, I think, no, death and taxes. Tax I, man always gets his money. We need an accountant for this. Yeah. this is <laughs> everyone should have an accountant, yes. depending on the state you're in. Okay, all right, here we go. There's so many questions and we have like three minutes left and we have a couple more things to say. So oh does, it's okay. I know, does Collaborate to Win do Canada? Yes. Okay, rolling in brokerage, freight, et cetera, into a single price that has been adjusted to compensate makes a lot less. I agree. Thank you, uh, Charles, is it? I'm sorry, my screen is really small. Okay, um, Giselle said, excellent answer, Nancy. I don't know what that was about, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't keep up on my comments. And let's see what else is here. I gotta keep scrolling up so slowly. Um, yes, on the taxes, I understand this. This is new, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marie, Debbie it's then included into your cost, right? It's it's included in your cost of doing business, which is why you have to make sure you are charging the clients properly along the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that was our last comment of record that I can see. So Heather, we believe it or not, it's 528, right? I never know how I'm gonna go an hour on certain subjects, although I knew this one could probably go two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everyone about, I know you had, the price increase, so yeah, tell so you get in before you go up in price. Yeah, so so get in in September because October first the price goes up to three seven. How do they and get in? I, I'm sorry. Give them a link on how they get in, and you can okay. So them. collaborate to win .com and it has little hyphens in between the words. So collaborate hyphen to hyphen win .com and there's a join now button. I vet everyone that comes through to make sure you're a designer, decorator, or stager. I want to see your website. I want to see your social media. I want to vet you completely. So some people don't have a website yet, and you don't have social media set up. So I don't. So I need to then ask you for more information so I can verify that you really are somebody that needs to be in this group. 
So you got to give me some time to do that. So don't wait to the last minute, please. Fair enough. And tell everyone that you're going to be at High Point. I am. So, um, so I'm going to be at High Point speaking at Massad Furniture. It's a gorgeous showroom. They're down in the Hamilton Wren section on the first floor, so it's easy to find. Saturday, we're doing a brunch and a talk about profitability. So Saturday at 10 a.m., I would so love to meet all of you there. Um, it's going to be a great event and a beautiful showroom that you should check out no matter what. So I hope that you will come see me then because we'll be talking about all this kind of stuff. I love this. I wish I was coming. I would come and add my two cents to that, but I am skipping High Point this year. Oh, that, ah, that, that, this that, one. This market, yeah. yeah. All right, and also tell everyone about the new YouTube videos that you are starting to put up. Okay, so in our, we have a public page for Collaborate to Win, and we also have our private group, but that's that's only if you remember. So our public page, um, on Thursdays at one o'clock, I'll do a product knowledge live. So it might be all talking about freight and delivery. It might be talking about um, this one vendor and what they're good for and what their price point is and things like that. So it's a different topic each week. And then we put them up on our YouTube page so you can watch them anytime at will. Um, so our YouTube page um, is Collaborate to Win. And, you know, so all the product knowledge videos are there and it's, it's really great to get familiar because there's so many vendors. There's so much, you know, constantly yeah. to know. Yeah, there is a, there is a lot to know. And here's, here's my last two cents for, you know, thank you, Heather, for being here thank and you. helping people make more money and running their businesses. You know, when you are juggling 15 clients at a time, which believe me, when people come to me, they're like, I have 12, I have 15, I'm wow. pulling my hair out, I have no, no time to do anything, trying to please everyone. And so here's what I always say, confidence is a brand that sells, mm -hmm. meaning if you get confident in your business model and how you're pricing and you understand the words around how to sell it, um, that's a win right there. And then if you have less clients but are making a higher profit, you actually have time to go watch Heather's videos and learn about vendors and do go to High Point and do the things that you're supposed to be doing in order to manage your business and make it smoother, more profitable, more enjoyable, and have balance in your life where you're actually are spending time doing hobbies and your family. Imagine that for some people, they're just pulling their hair out all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you're having issues with managing all of this it's a tough tough business um and i get it and i'm here to help so thank you for watching weekend wind down if you need a consult with me get on my calendar uh you go nancygansacoffer.com and sign up for an initial consultation i have so much to teach all the time that i can't possibly teach it all in public <laughs> so um thank you heather again everyone have a great weekend and we'll thank see you next week at weekend wind down friday bye oh yeah cheers i am almost cheers. done cheers <laughs> bye everyone have a great bye. weekend bye